I noticed they're still on the table, so I want to ask you to grab it and stick it with your Bible. Put it in the fly leaf of your Bible, if you would. Uh, today, but as a matter of fact, we should be praying for the Rohingya of Myanmar and Bangladesh. Now, interestingly, um, these individuals are being they're, they're in refugee camps and they're in and they're in dire straits. And I would say, if I remember correctly, some of them are, are enduring some level of persecution. We need to pray that the gospel will penetrate and that they will not be a forgotten people. It's a genocide at some level. That's right. It's a genocide at some level. Exactly right. Um, thank you for Thank you for distributing those, by the way. I really appreciate it. And uh, we need to always keep before the Lord in our prayer time these people groups around the world. Now, a lot of them are here. I think I told you all recently about this city up near Detroit. I don't know the name of the city in Detroit. But it's a two-square-mile area. There are 26 language languages. 26 languages in two square miles. I think that's, Nashville is getting pretty close to that, I'm saying Nashville. Nashville, and there's parts of Atlanta too, is that not? Yeah. I mean, this, we, folks, we have amazing opportunities, and guess what? Hattiesburg as well. There's places you can find people speaking uh, Arabic, um, places you can find them speaking Portuguese, there's large Brazilian population, larger than I thought, it's not large, large, but here, um, Chinese, Vietnamese, Korean, etc., etc., they're all around us. And I'm praying, and I have mentioned this publicly before, but I am praying that God will give us an opportunity. We have our Hispanic worship, our Spanish, uh, one day it'll be a church, it's not a church yet, it's beginning to function like one. Um, but I'm praying we'll have another congregation, yet a third congregation. I'm praying that God will send that individual to us that will be able to lead that congregation and um, start yet another church in our facility. We have the space. We have space for 400 small groups. So we have the space. 400 attendants, that is. Um, divide that up. Yeah, that's how much space we have. So we can be we can be doing a lot more. We need to pray for that. All right, Scrappy Church. What a title for us to have. And during the month of January, and it may may actually end before January. Uh, may just go four weeks instead of five. I think there are five Sundays in January. They just four. All right. Over the next four weeks, we're going to look at this. <coughs> we're going to do our best to finish it. The first Sunday in February, which is also Super Bowl Sunday, we will do uh, Sunday through Wednesday, um, Book of Revelation, chapters 1 through 3. That's the winter Bible study this year. Uh, usually it's called January Bible study, but we're doing it in February. So let's call it winter Bible study. And we'll do that then um, and on, on each of those nights. And of course, I think I'll probably introduce it on Sunday morning. I'm not sure yet, but because it's a lot of material to cover. Just chapter one alone is worth three days of, of exposition. It's a lot churchy. It's a lot churchy. <laughs> it's a lot churchy. And we need it. And it teaches us how to be a scrappy church and that we right on the heels of what we're doing here. <coughs> Excuse me if I'm with this constant coughing. Um, I don't have constant contact. I have constant cough going all the time here lately. But stated simply, the Scrappy Church is a church that believes that God is not finished with them yet. A Scrappy Church does not quit. They don't give up. They give it everything they have. They leave everything on the proverbial field. Well, there it is. That's the Scrappy Church. It doesn't give up. The leaders don't.
quit. Y'all, somebody this morning walked up to me and said, I don't think we can do it. What did you hear me say from the pulpit? God is not finished with this church. Upon this church, I will build, upon this rock, I will build my church. He is not finished with us yet. But how many times have you heard statements like that? How many times have you heard, we can't compete with the big churches in town? You ever said it? I know you have said it. Not in my presence. Listen to this one. I heard someone started another church near us. Don't we have enough churches around us already? I've heard that one before. Not, not in our fellowship, but I've heard it. Out there walking around talking to people. One of the bigger churches started a satellite campus by us. How's that right? We can't reach young families. You ever heard that? Here's the rest of the sentence. We don't have the kinds of things larger churches offer kids. We don't. You ever been over to Temple upstairs in their children's section? I mean, there is a movie theater up there. Maybe it's for student ministry. I don't remember which now. But there's this fantastic movie theater. You can go in there and eat popcorn and do the whole nine yards. And the walls are black, and it's like being over at the Grand or one of those other theaters, you know. It's really nice inside. Wonderful. Is that what it takes to be a church? Don't think so. We just don't have the resources. Got anything you want to add to the list? I mean, these are all negatives. Let's Somebody leave me in a word of criticism for a minute. What else can you add to that? Oh, that's a bad one. Yeah, I've heard that before. We can't do it even with God's help. If Jesus was here, he would have said, you didn't come for the message, you came for the movie. Mm. Is that right? I can't say. <laughs> I can't say. But I want to tell you something. There is a word that describes the attitude of a scrappy church, and that is the word hope, H-O-P-E, hope. They have hope in the promises of God. Y'all, forgive me, I intended to assign these ahead of time and just pass out strips of paper, but um, I'm burning the candle at both ends, and so I didn't get this done um, as I wanted to. But I need some volunteers. Everything we're about to read is in the book of Psalms. And I have five psalms here that I want us to take a look at <coughs> for just a moment's time. Psalm 31, verse 24. Who will read that? Peggy has that. Let me assign them first. Psalm 33, 18. Who will read that? Will has 33, 18. Psalm 42, 11. Cindy has. Psalm 71, verse 5. Who will take that one? Chuck has that. Psalm 146, verse 5. And I hope I copied down right on all of these verses. Jim has that. So begin with 3124. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all you who hold the Lord. Thank you. Psalm 3318. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear you. On those who hope in his mercy. Mercy, goodness. 4211. Why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance, and my God. 715. For you, O Lord, are our hope, our trust, the Lord from our you. Thank you. 146, verse 5. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, 
whose hope is in the Lord his God. The Scraggy Church is a church built with hope. It is a church that operates on hope, but not just any hope, hope in the promises and in the presence of Almighty God. The Scrappy Church has members who believe that the best days are still ahead. That does not mean 100% of the members will believe that, but key members are persuaded of it. That's what we're speaking of. Key members, leaders, core leaders like y'all are persuaded of this very fact. So this is where we're going in this study. And a scrappy church has to make some fundamental attitude changes. The leadership within the church. I want to tell you something as I read this and studied the little book. I can't remember what it costs. It's at LifeWay. It's about $10. I didn't see the boxes of them like I did the other, other things. But that little book, as I read it, it just chewed me up and spit me out. It really did. It's tough. It's some tough stuff. And it causes, especially the pastor of a church, to do a lot of personal introspection. Well, we have to make changes, attitude changes. And we have to move from something negative to something positive. If we are going to be a scrappy church. So I want to show you six transitions that uh, the leadership and the membership makes uh, when it comes to being a scrappy church. The first is they move from excuses to ownership. From excuses to ownership. One pastor listed these two excuses that he insisted on that it would explain the decline in his church. <coughs> this is what he listed. Number one, couldn't compete with the larger churches. He said, just can't do it. And as we've already stated, to be redundant now, we are not in competition with the larger churches. God has a purpose for the larger churches. And God has a purpose for the smaller churches as well. God has a purpose for Venture and Temple and Grace Temple and some of the others around. And God has a purpose for the 38th Avenues and others in our community. Then the other excuse this man came up with is a transitional neighborhood. Well, this is the interesting part. This is, this is a pastor's testimony. First, the neighborhood was too poor when he got there. He was just too poor. And poor people didn't want to come to his place. Then, it was because they started, uh, some people came in and started building some nice apartments, shades of just across West 4th and turning on the, um, what is it, Beverly Hills there? Yeah. Right there, in those nice apartments there. Then he said, well, they're gated communities. I can't get into the gated communities. And those exclusive families make too much money. They're too rich. First ones were too poor. Now the other ones are too rich. So nobody wants to come because they're either too poor or they're too rich. That guy had a Goldilocks syndrome, would you say? He was waiting for the community that was just right. Just right. So we have to move from that, from excuses to ownership. Why am I saying that? Well, one thing, one of the things that that uh, are important to understand as we deal with with uh, ownership is this is our community, not just the immediate community around us. Yes this community. But our community includes over there where the Williams live and the Bergers live and Cindy lives. Our community includes over there where Dr. D lives. 
Our community includes back over there, encroaching behind Sunflower, where, where uh, Carolyn lives. Our community's over there, Dale, where we live. Our community's where Chuck and Winnell live. Our community is where you live. That's our community. And we need to take ownership of our community. That's what we must do. But then move from obstacles to allies. What on earth is that about? Well, every member of the church is present in the church for a reason. God either placed them there or God allowed them to be there for His purpose. Each member is a potential resource for reaching other individuals. The third transition that we need to make is we need to move. Number one, excuses to ownership. Number two, obstacles to allies. Number three, from this attitude that we're limited, that we have limitations, to an attitude of abundance. Now here's a key statement to take away from this. God has given to us all the resources we need to move forward. Tom Rainer says, a mindset of limitations creates a limitation on leadership. And that's exactly right. Who can quote uh, Philippians 4.19? Who can do that? I'll give you the first word. Mine. Mine. But mine. Thank you. Yes. Shall supply your needs according to So we have enough money. Y'all remember the story? Guy got a project in mind. He said, got good news and bad news. Good news is, it only costs this much money. Bad news is, it's still in your pocket. <laughs> we have enough money. It's in God's bank account. We have enough people to be able to do what we need to do to take the steps we need to take at this point in time we have more than enough facility at this church. And we're using these facilities. We're talking about RISE. Uh, if you have forgotten what that is, that's Jump Corps. But if we're speaking about RISE, the men, if they have a men's group this time, will meet in one of our rooms. We're using the facility to um, pardon this almost pun, facilitate their needs. We're doing that. We are, we are trying to do that. There are on occasion that we have had music classes take place within our building, our facilities. Some like it, some don't. You know the most complaint I get out of it? Who's going to pay the light bill when they're in there practicing their stuff? You know? Y'all, please. We got to think bigger than that. We honestly do. That's small thinking. And if a church is ever going to be bigger than it is, it has to think bigger than it is as well. We must do that. Our facilities are very adequate, ladies and gentlemen, for a number of different ministries. Wednesday night, we have English as a second language, helping others practice English. Hope. We have that, and we, we will talk about that in just a moment uh, as one of the different things, opportunities that, that we can have. Uh, maybe it'll be next week or week after before we get to it. The age of the membership is what we need to do what God wants us to do. We're not too old, we're not too young. One of the things, David, y'all, every one of us present, that blessed me a lot in the past couple of years was how in BBS 
Our senior adults came together and helped to make some of the, whatever it was they were making, crafts and whatnot, helped to put these things together. That was such a blessing. We needed these things done, and the senior adults of the church stepped up and did that. What a great ministry for our senior adults to be involved in. We have enough. We're not too old. We're not too young. We have what it takes uh, for this particular thing. There's another transition I want to take you to. We need to move from despair to joy. From despair to joy. Philippians 4.4. Peggy, that's your life verse. <coughs> Remember? Starts with an R. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Scrappy churches are rejoicing churches, celebrating churches. I want you to understand something I try to do on Sunday morning in our worship time that some of y'all I'm not saying necessarily present. Some of us as a church don't necessarily like. When we finish singing a song, what do I often do? Do you know why? That verse of scripture right there. And rejoicing must be demonstrative. Rejoicing must be outward. Not just inward. I was in a conference. And the pastor said. Let's rejoice in our heart. And then he. <laughs> and I thought. I don't know if I can bear this. <laughs> Wasn't my church. So I kept my mouth shut. But I wanted. After we sang one of the songs. I wanted to praise God. Ladies and gentlemen. That's why I try to lead us to do that. It's a, an act of rejoicing. A church, a person who rejoices will rise up out of despair. They will do that. Now someone please read Philippians 4.8. Thank you. Let me ask y'all a question. What do you think brings despair? What do you think causes someone to make the statement where they said to me this morning, I am so discouraged, I don't think we can make it? Okay, meditate on. Without hope, people perish. Without hope, without vision, where there is no vision, the people perish. Okay? Somebody said you can live two weeks without water. I don't think it's that long. They say you can live 30 days without food. I think you can go longer than that. Some of us, I definitely could. I've gone that long without food. They say you can't live a minute without hope. Actually, they, they, they said one second. That's hyperbole. Uh, okay, you need to come expecting. Anything else brings despair? Anything else? What do y'all think? Can we try to witness to and you just can't get through the court? You may feel like you're just going to a wall. Thank you guys for... You feel like you're beating your head against the wall. Yeah. Does that work? I rephrase that. Okay. All right. Well, here, here's... What, what, uh, everybody has said this. Everybody has said this. We're focusing on the negative. That's what brings despair. 
when you think on it, when you meditate on it, when you, you know, all you see is a wall, you don't see a window, you don't see a door. Man, I want to tell you something. Teresa, you can relate to this as well. We would be on the mission field and we would try to find communities where they were sensitive to the Word of God, where we would be able to start a church, plant a church. And sometimes it was like talking to walls, wasn't it? I mean, especially when you get into an Asian culture with, with some of the animism, animism there and the Buddhism and the other isms that are in, and most of them are wasms and they don't know it yet. But um, all of them are there. It's just so challenging, so tough, and it would be easy to despair. I would have such a time, Chuck, in some of the Muslim countries where they may go like um, uh, Kerry and, and like um, um, Adnan Judson years before they see a decision for Christ where worship is done with the shades pulled down, dark shades, and you whisper your songs of praise in some of these places. Tell you a great story while I'm chasing that rabbit. <coughs> There was a group and the missionary was leading them and he was doing everything according to protocol and they were coming at separate times and, and uh, the, the place was not announced till the last minute which often has to happen and is happening more often again in China now uh, than it was but they got in there and the shades are all drawn and they're all singing praises to God in that language, that particular language of that Muslim country. And they're whispering their song. Whispering their song. Just a soft whisper. And one of the men, new believer, stopped because they had read that whoever believes in him will not be ashamed. And he said, we're singing like we're ashamed. And he just reared back and let her rip. Right there in the midst. Isn't that glorious? Isn't that great? I want to tell you though, we have to watch the focus on there. In the spiritual realm, there are two things that bring joy. Rejoicing. Rejoice where? In the Lord. And thanksgiving. Did I say two? Let me add to that. Rehearse the promises of God. Which will help us to keep our focus on Him. If we rejoice in the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, and rehearse the promises of the Lord, we will keep our focus on Him. The next transition that we have to make is from fear to courage. Fear is the enemy of action. We've all said the following, every one of us. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. That's actually a paraphrase of a line from Sir Francis Bacon who said nothing is terrible except fear itself. FDR um, paraphrased it a little differently than that as, as well. Fear is nothing more and nothing less than a symptom of the lack of trust in the Lord. Sometimes we get paralyzed by fear and we're afraid we're going to fail. We're afraid it's going to be a waste of our time. We're afraid it's going to be a waste of resources if we do certain things. There's a sixth one that I want to give to you, a sixth transition. <coughs> and with this, I will field any questions uh, and any comments you may have this evening. But this last transition may be the most difficult. Moving from the impossible to the possible. I'd like for you to give me some verses that reflect 
that you believe that things are possible. Matthew 19, 26. Jesus beheld them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Very good. All things work together for good to bring him up the Lord. And we're called according to his purpose. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Great paraphrase. Keep going. <laughs> I drew a blank. <laughs> or finish. even ask. <laughs> <laughs> to him be glory in the church. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Very good. Very good. We might even get to that Sunday, but somehow I doubt we'll get that far in Ephesians 3 when we get there. I want to tell you something. All of this and more is so true. Folks, I'm not pointing my finger at anyone. I'm not pointing my finger at a single individual unless I point it back at myself. But I tell you, growing 38th Avenue and reaching our communities for Christ is not impossible. Right. In Christ Jesus, it is possible. Right. And it will come to pass. It will come to pass. It will happen. I want to throw something out. I want you to tell me what you think of it. You may have something more ambitious in mind. But I've been meditating on this, you know, New Year and all that stuff, 2019. And I always try to come up with something in my mind. What can we do? What can I do? What can be a prayer focus for 2019? I'm not talking about resolutions, y'all. I, I won't go there, you know. Although that would be fun to sing one day. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. That's a good one. Um, what number was that in the 75 handle? Like 276 or something like that? Anyway, where did I go with that? 2019. 19 baptisms in 2019. What do y'all think of that? Tell me what, be honest with me. Oh yeah, it's possible. Uh, very good, it's possible. Absolutely. Nineteen baptisms. How many of you would pray for that? All right, here's the, here's the real question. How many of you would put feet to your prayers? Uh-oh, no hands went up. You see, like the little old lady told this story after mugshot, just four mugshots burned out. The next day it burned uh, when it was up here. There was a lady who wanted a bar to disappear. And she prayed, Lord, I pray that bar would disappear. I pray you burn that thing down. And one day the bar burned to the ground and everybody came by to see. And they were talking to her and said, well, your prayer was answered. And she said, you know, sometimes you just got to put feet to your prayers. <laughs> <coughs> the next day, mugshots burned. And Butch came to me and said, were you praying? <laughs> hey. We have to put feet to our prayers. Nothing is possible if we stay in the same place we are right now, that we presently are. 19 in 2019. That's not even an ambitious number, y'all. How many per month is that, Brother Dale? 
All right, 26. Let's go for it. Two months. And a little bit. We can do it. We can be that scrappy church. We can be that kind of church. Do y'all have any questions, any comments you'd like to make? Well, actually, we can't do it. Only God can do it. Thank you very much. Clarification. <laughs> God can make us a scrappy church. And I would say, I looked up scrappy church right now. Lifeway has a deal. If you order five or more copies, you get them for six fifty dollars each. So if anybody wants one, you tell me, and I'll order a book. Uh, you heard it right there. Well, I work for a Baptist church. Either way is fine. If you want the book, it's good. It's good to read. Um, because I may go beyond what's in the book, but I may not share everything that's in the book. I did not do it this time with this lesson. I pulled out the pertinent information I felt like we could use. And by the way, all of the, um, the graphs, all of the graphs are used by permission. That's why I didn't mind. I told Sean I wanted to record tonight. I wanted people to hear it. This may be a blessing for another church out there somewhere, another pastor. You know, y'all turn around and wave the camera because they, they're people watch us. You know, people over in, in other parts of the world, people in other parts of the United States watch what we do when we stream these things. Um, so, you know, this might be a blessing for somebody. All right, let's close with prayer, then. Let's do that. If we could, Tom Williams, I want to call on you, please, sir. Heavenly Father, the great I am, we thank you, Lord, for the way you have blessed us in the past. We thank you, Lord, for the future, where you're going to bless us to grow, to reach out to the lost. Lord, we want to see the church grow, but we pray that it will be new souls, <coughs> Heavenly Father, that the kingdom can grow, and you can be praised and blessed that the world can see that you're still alive and still on the throne and still powerful, God. We pray you'll anoint us, bless us, and guide us in the direction we need to go to see that growth. Encourage us, Heavenly Father, I pray. Speak to us that we'll know that we're in the right direction and guide us and be with us throughout this growth. I ask you to bless us now as we go to our homes, keep us safe, and keep our hearts stirred up. Holy Spirit would be a little burning fire in our soul if we would see the growth here in the church. We'll have a hunger for that growth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.